Today we're talking about Iran, a country that most people stopped caring about the moment we pulled out of the Iran deal. Don't pull out, it's gonna be the biggest nuclear disaster ever. No, oh, we pulled out, now yeah, what's next? Two days later, Trump's meeting with Kim Jong-un, that's gonna be the biggest nuclear disaster ever. One group that has felt the impact of Trump leaving the Iran nuclear deal is Iran. A country whose economy America is single handedly trying to destroy using our newfound sanction power. In this episode, we're going to talk about the growing international war over the fate of Iran's economy, between America trying to destroy it and China trying to prop it up. Of course, Iran is floating somewhere in the middle of this cash war, just trying to do the best they can. To understand how we got here, though, we need to go back in time a little bit to May 8th when the United States decided to pull out of the Iran deal. Taking a page from HBO's Game of Thrones, the president tweeting sanctions are coming, confirming he is tightening the screws on Tehran as promised when he quit the Iran nuclear deal. Now, if you look at Iran's exports, you'll quickly notice a vulnerability. <whistles> oh wow, someone definitely opposes the Green New Deal. If you add up all the different types of petroleum, more than three quarters of their exports are oil based. It was clear from Jump Street that this was going to be a complicated process, because telling the United States to stop buying oil from someone's like telling the cookie monster to start cutting carbs. Um, I would feel more comfortable if maybe you became the kale monster. Because of this, in an odd twist, the first round of US sanctions didn't even include petroleum products, instead focusing on preventing Iran from buying American dollars, trading gold, and selling auto parts and commercial passenger aircraft. And if you're curious, auto parts and commercial passenger aircraft make up about 0.75 of 1% of their exports. Feels like we kind of tacked that last part on because we needed to confidently say, hey, we stopped buying something from Iran. The first round of sanctions went into effect on August 6th, which wow, talk about taking your time after leaving that deal. Kind of feels like we angrily stormed out of the party and then waited outside because it was taking our Uber about 10 minutes to arrive. Still though. The pressure is coming down hard on Iran. The Trump administration has imposed a first round of sanctions on the country after pulling out of the Iran nuclear deal in May. I covered those sanctions on my channel, so if you want more in-depth analysis on it, you can check it out with the link in the description. Now those sanctions might sound mild, because not buying Iranian cars kind of feels like trying to financially ruin the Donald Trump real estate empire by boycotting Trump stakes. But the hammer did come down because of our pressure to cut Iran off from foreign currencies and gold. This immediately led to a panic that had everybody trying to sell their Iranian rials to get their hands on some of the more stable US currency and gold. Meanwhile, uh, Iran's rial actually hit a lower uh, record low against the dollar on Wednesday. It's dropped in value by 140% against the dollar since the US pulled out of the nuclear deal four months ago. Between Saturday and Wednesday, the currency lost a quarter of its value. Now, I really want to emphasize this. In that four-day period, the rial lost a quarter of its value. That means if your savings were in rial, well, you just lost a quarter of your savings. And that's no exaggeration either. We have some savings, and every day the value of it is going down while the dollar keeps going up. We figured we should buy some dollars now to protect our money. Unfortunately, as we talked about earlier, Iran was no longer able to get their hands on a new US dollar, which led to the dollar value being incredibly more in Iran than any other place in the world. So yes, it is perfectly reasonable to be walking in a park at night and have a guy in a puffy jacket come up to you and say, hey, you want to buy some cash? I've got a dime bag right here. Nah, this isn't that weak European currency. This is that strong American green that will get your savings high. Because of this, the Iranian central bank dipped into its savings of foreign currency and said, I don't care what people on the street are selling dollars for. We're selling one dollar for 42,000 rial, and anyone trading at any other rate will be considered a smuggler. And they weren't messing around either. On Wednesday, police arrested dozens of black market currency traders in downtown Tehran. These men make up an informal currency trading floor that operates on Tehran's streets. So the question now is, 
If the government's selling a limited supply of United States dollars for a set rate and everyone else is selling United States dollars for a lot more, why buy it from those other people? Simple, the government won't sell you US dollars. I mean, they're not made of US dollars. They selectively divvied out who and how many dollars they'd give to any one person. So this has led to an inflation problem and a central bank that's running out of foreign currency. And then the other shoe dropped. This November, the US is turning the financial screws on Iran, one of the world's biggest oil producers. Tough new sanctions will make the country's roughly two and a half million barrels a day of oil exports toxic for buyers. On November 4th, the United States pulled the trigger and implemented strict sanctions on Iranian petroleum product exports, which again makes up more than 75% of their total exports when you count all of the different product types. I also did an episode on this if you want to hear more details in the description. Now I'm kind of running low on ways to put Trump and Rouhani on opposite side of an Iranian flag, but we'll see how I manage to do it when I edit this video together. Keeping it traditional, I like it. So at the top of the episode, I mentioned China and India, and this is the point where they begin to come into the picture, because... But they are giving waivers to eight countries, allowing them to continue to buy Iranian oil, with the promise they will reduce that amount over time. Yes, we gave waivers to eight countries. China, India, Greece, Italy, Taiwan, Japan, Turkey, and South Korea to continue buying Iranian oil. So Iran, with a crippled currency, is now receiving a significant blow to their revenue as well, which in turn means the government's in more debt. Now we talk about how government finances deficits by selling bonds a lot on this channel, but Iran has a particular problem. Who's going to buy a 10 year bond when at the end of those 10 years you're not sure if Iran's still going to be a country? I mean with all these problems you'll have to put a gun to my head to get me to buy some of those government bonds. Which is essentially what the Iranian economy is doing right now. It forces private banks to hand over depositors money in order to finance the Iranian deficit, which is tightening up loans and generally just shrinking the economy. And how do you stimulate the economy? Print money and pump it in, which would decrease the value of the Iranian real even more and wow, you guys are not in a great position right now, are you? Well, here comes China and India. It's quite interesting, again, the geopolitical stance that both China and India are making a very strong statement and saying this in terms of wanting the, uh, fulfilling the demand for oil and saying to the markets, we're going to continue taking Iranian oil. Before we get into the details, I want to talk geography, because we kind of forget that all this is happening in China and India's backyard. First China, because it kind of feels like China just found a cheap opportunity to make a new best friend. They're looking at the US like, we're going to keep buying oil from Iran. What are you going to do, sanction us? Throw it on the pile. The import waivers I mentioned above are expiring very soon and China is leading the fight to continue buying oil from Iran. Earlier this year we saw... Well, this week history was made when the Shanghai International Energy Exchange launched the first crude futures contracts priced in Chinese renminbi or yuan. Yeah, now China is getting cheap oil and Iran is getting a foreign currency they can use to buy up some of their rial. Sure, it's not the US dollar, but it's certainly more stable than the Iranian currency. This new petro yuan is a petroleum future product, so China is giving Iran yuan for future orders of petroleum. And man, I bet you can get a great deal on oil right now. It's received so much relief from these yuan investments that Iran has actually switched their benchmark from the dollar to the yuan. which. Well, we haven't really spent much of the last 40 years endearing ourselves to you, but I guess now is as good as any time to dump the dollar. China is interested in maintaining good relations because they're basing their trillion dollar one belt one road investment on continued good relations with Iran. At the same time, you have India. Few of those filling up at this New Delhi petrol station have a view on Iran's nuclear program, nor the merits of a deal to control it. But the renewal of US sanctions on Iran could be felt here. India is the second biggest importer of Iranian oil after China. 18% of its oil comes from Iran. Yeah, with India it definitely feels a lot more transactional. 
but they have a ton of money tied up in Iranian oil infrastructure. The relationship kind of feels like the relationship between a Republican and his weed dealer. Do you like him? Eh, I mean, sure. Do you agree with his politics? Oh, no, 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 no. Would you buy from somebody else? I don't want to have to start a new trade relationship over again. He lives so close. In the past few days, they did create a new anti-terrorist alliance, which step one, Iran, stop funding terrorists. India is currently using rupees to pay for the oil because the United States won't let them send dollars or euros. And since India is a closer ally to the United States than China is, they have had to make the payment mechanics unnecessarily complicated. The rupees get sent to Iran, exchanged for rial, and then those rial get sent to India to buy farm commodities, food, medicine, and medical devices. Specifically those humanitarian items, nothing that could be helpful for more than bare minimum survival. So what's the end game here? Well, this administration is looking at a few ideas. Regime change is on the edge of everyone's mind. I think we, we, we have uh, shot the starting gun on the full unraveling of the, of the Iranian Islamic Republic. And we all know that replacement government is just gonna love America because we drove their economy into the ground. That's how you win hearts and minds, right? What most people are more reasonably expecting is either Iran returns to the negotiating table to start a new stricter Iran deal, limiting their non-nuclear weapons programs and aggressive behaviors in the Middle East, which considering we just pulled out the last agreement less than a year ago with best case scenario a questionable legal defense doesn't seem very likely. Or we just accept that this is the new normal status quo and see if other countries slowly start to move away from the US and start doing business with Iran again. I mean, America hasn't talked or cared about any of this since we left the Iran deal, so we could do this for quite some time. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.